We're here in Natal, Brazil with Captain Eric. First of all, are you comfortable right there? Is that cozy? I feel real comfortable. I'm missing two extra belts, but this is good enough. <laughs> uh, you have a busy schedule right now uh, in all over the world right now. Uh, just break down which fights you, you have up until New Year's Eve. So we have, uh, first off, we'll have Korean Zombie. He'll be fighting Frankie Edgar, which was uh, a last minute replacement. I was in at Fight Ready training Korean Zombie for uh, December 4, 21st, UFC Busan against Brian Ortega. And now it was a completely different opponent, a uh, shorter opponent, quicker opponent, a wrestler, uh, more of a boxer, a uh, boxer wrestler type of fighter. And Frankie Yeager, former UFC champion. Uh, so we have a, a much bigger um, adversary on our plate, but this is kind of the things that we are prepared for. We, we, we enjoy the, this time, uh, type of pressure. Pressure is a privilege. That's what I always tell my fighters. What's the biggest change in terms of strategy? And staying, I mean, so close to the fight, you, know, do you, you don't have enough time to, to change everything in your training. How do you to, to adapt for someone like Brian Ortega to Frankie Edgar? Well, first we had, uh, I brought Leandro Ego to mimic uh, Brian Ortega because uh, he's very good in his, st his striking and jiu-jitsu. So he'll brawl with you and then he could submit you. Uh, we saw that in his last fight in Bellator against Sean Bunch. But so we had him. So now we had to make uh, a quick change and I'm actually getting one of our fighters here. His name is Clabino. He's young. He's fast. He's got footwork. He's been wrestling with me for four years. So he can adapt to anything. So we're working on him to send him out to Korea uh, to mimic uh, Frankie Edgar for the last couple of weeks. Um, so that's what that's what we've done. And it, he Korean zombie learns very fast. You know, I, I remember they said he learned that twister on YouTube when he did that twister on Leonardo Garcia. And I was like, there's no way he learned that the day before. And then I started coaching him and I could see how how he could have done that just by watching the video. He's, he's amazing uh, as, as much as, as quickly as he learns. Then from there, on December 29th, Bellator versus Ryzen, Fedor's retirement fight, we have Ilara Aria Stark Joani. She's making, a, she's representing Bellator versus Ryzen, so that's a huge honor for her. And only her second fight, she had a huge debut, an outstanding debut against Becky Rawlings. Uh, ended up submitting to her and, and showing the world that Arya Stark has arrived and that you don't want to be added on her list, her hit list. So she has a Japanese girl, Japanese girl on her hit list. She's undefeated, Kana Wantanabe. That'll happen on December 29th. Now we get down to that fifth, uh, the fourth quarter, last couple minutes. Uh, the Hail Mary is um, we have the stalwart, the, the OG. Patricky Pitbull, the origin, the first Pitbull brother, uh, is fighting for a world title in Ryzen, Grand Prix lightweight world title. Two fights in one night. So that's gonna be, that's gonna be one of the greatest moments to have for me because I, to be clear is this will be the first time to have brothers having world titles. And his, uh, Patricio Pitbull is obviously the greatest fighter in Bellator history with two belts. And this, his brother is gonna represent Bellator He's in Ryzen, and now he's going into the Grand Prix tournament, which he won the first round. Now he's in the semis and the finals. In addition to that, we have the PFL tournament in, uh, I believe, Madison Square Garden, New York, in New York. Yeah, it's the, the, the theater, I, I guess. Okay, so it's in, it's in New York, and Jordan Johnson is preparing for that. And we have our fighter who just got his visa, and we're sending him out. His name is uh, Augusto. And uh, we call him Hodor. So I'm big on the Game of Thrones things because yeah. it's about taking belts and taking kingdom, kingdoms and slaying kings, you know, and becoming one yourself. So I call him Hodor. So he's going over to help out Jordan Johnson for the PFL. So um, on top of Pat Henry Cejudo, or Patricio Pitbull becoming my first champ champ, the next month in Chicago was Henry Cejudo become my second champ champ with two belts in uh, Bellator, two belts in the UFC. The plan is on December 31st to get two more belts, PFL 
world title, $1 million for Jordan Johnson, and to culminate it with Patricky Pitbull, rising lightweight Grand Prix champion, first brothers in history to have world titles together at the same time. And really, we'll have three. Well, I'm coming off the air, all the belts is what I'm trying to basically tell you. Uh, we got the flyweight belt, we got a bantamweight belt, we have a featherweight belt, we have a lightweight belt. So it's pretty soon I'm, I'm coming after the, the next four. Really, those are the four toughest weight classes, in my opinion, in MMA, those first four weight classes. As you get bigger, it gets a little bit, the athletes tend to enter other sports. Uh, don't get me wrong, we have great athletes, but a lot of them enter, uh, have a lot more options than to stay in the MMA where they can, they can play baseball, they can play football, maybe they can play basketball, golf, soccer. Whereas you're a little bit smaller, weight classes 155 and under, a lot of the population is 155 pounds and under, you know. It's not, and not everybody's a giant, and nobody said that the, the king of the jungle is an elephant either. So first four weight classes are the toughest, and we got four belts. So we're coming for five and six now. Uh, once uh, rising, and then also uh, the 93 kilo and the PFL. Do you see that uh, getting those belts uh, is going to get, get into you as the, the coach of the year in 2019? Well, I can tell you in 2018, I had two belts and it wasn't enough. So I made it my goal to not only just bend reality, to create reality. I'm not in the business of MMA, I'm in the business of possibilities. You say it's impossible, I say we can do it. You say we can't get a, way, uh, I, I, we can't get a belt in every weight class, well that's my goal and, I, and I'm halfway there. So, or, uh, You know, we own 25% of the belts in all of MMA, right here, right here in Natal, Brazil, right here at Pilbo Bros. Two belts here and two more with uh, Patricio's belts. And we're going to get fifth one with Patricky. So um, I say if, the, if, I, if I don't get it, um, somebody should, they better have a lot of belts in their, in their, uh, in their stable this year, you know, um, so... You're, you're, you're training Patricky to the, to the Rising Finals. Is, is, is this your, your first time training someone for more than a fight in one night? Because it's, it's, it's kind of rare these days to have uh, mm -hmm. multiple fights in one night. Is this the first time you're doing that? Yes. Yes, it is. You know, we do it in wrestling. It's a lot common in wrestling. And to tell you the truth, it's a, it's a battle of, it's really, it's a mental battle. When you get into that finals, you're going to be hurt. You're going to be bloody. You're going to maybe have one eye shut. Your leg's going to hurt from low kicks. Your, your body's going to hurt. Your ribs are going to hurt from body shots. And, and, but it's not who's got the best technique when you get when these tournaments. When you've had to fight this, uh, the second and third fight in one day, it's about when your body gets tired, Your mind says, this is where my, uh, winners are made. When your mind gets tired, this is where your heart says, this is where champions are made. And that, in a nutshell, is going to be Patricky Pit Bull on December 31st. He's going to be tired. He's going to be hurt. He's going to be bloody. He's going to have doubts. But his mind's not going to let him, his body give up. His heart's not going to get his, lot, his mind give up. It's a, it's a battle of... Uh, of heart and soul and mind. It's a battle of, uh, it's a battle of the mind, really, going into that final match because it's, everybody's going to be hurt. That other group, that other two, those two you guys are going to go out there and kill each other. Same like Patricky Pitbull and Luis Killer. So, I mean, it's, it's, that's, that, I think it's a more of a mental battle than it is a physical and technical. And, and my job is to help him already believe that he's already the champ. Help him, he already has, about, has, the, has the belt, and we just go about the day gathering evidence to show that we have the belt. You know, we have Patrice Bit Bull to, to consult with. How did you do it? How did you get your first belt? How did you get your second belt? We have Henry Cejudo. You go and ask them, how did you do it? How did you get this belt? Kelvin Gastelum was here. How did he win the Ultimate Fighter as the last seed? 
you know, and, and even how could you, what would you change in your fight for the title against Israel Adesanya? What would you change in your last fight? You know, these are things that we could, we have to, as athletes, uh, we have to gather, we have to believe that we've already did it, and then we have to go back and gather it and go about our day like we already did it and just talk to other people about it. It all comes through conversation. You get uh, two of the greatest fighters all of all time. This is like having Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson in the same room. If they walked in, we're not going to ask them questions? Of course. So we have that access to, for Patricky right now. We have some of the best, the best fighters in the world right here in the Tal Brazil right now, and we're able to ask them, give us, we're able to uh, absorb what they have learned. And, and that's, the, that would be the main thing. How could I prepare Patricky for that? Well, you know, Henry won the Olympics. He was losing every round. He was losing the, bat, the match. Every match, every round he was losing the match and came back in the third period and won. So we, we can ask him, how, tell us how you did it. And tell Patricio. Patricio was losing against Daniel Strauss, three rounds, eye closed. Couldn't see any other one because he got poked. Ask him, what did you, how did you pull that off? What was your mind thinking? How did you feel in your heart? Why didn't you give up? Why didn't you even call time out? You couldn't see. And he'll tell you. And he's going to give you a piece of uh, himself as he tells you. And we get, when we take that in and we use it, and that's how we create gold. It's about alchemy. It's about being an alchemist, creating gold out of, no, out of nothing, about bending reality and then creating reality. Reality says, you know, Henry would have stayed in Maryville coming from the humble beginnings that he started as. Reality says, 10 years ago, I was living out of my car. Reality would have told me that might not have ever changed. And here I'm in, we're in Brazil, in a beautiful in a beach town, and we got the greatest team, and not only in Brazil, probably the world right now. Um, so there's, I don't, as far as I know, there's no other team that's got five belts. Um, I think um, December 31st, we're gonna have the most. That's the plan, and, and I'm not gonna bend reality, I'm gonna create reality. I'm making sure that reality doesn't dictate where I'm gonna go, where my fighters are gonna go. A lot of these guys, like myself, you, you, your reality is, is desperate at some times. And sometimes you have, to, you have to create your own reality and you have to make things happen. And that's something that I've, I've, I've learned. I've done it myself and now I'm teaching others. Henry Cejudo, he lost to Demetrius Johnson two years ago. His reality was he was never going to beat Demetrius Johnson. When he fought Demetrius Johnson, he was a four to one underdog. Now he beat him, then he beat the greatest bantamweight of all time. His reality was, was to be number two as long as Demetrius Johnson was still active. Patrice Pitbull, his reality is he could never go up and beat the guy who knocked out his brother, Patricky and Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler was a world champ. Ever since we've been in Bellator, he's been the world champ, as far as, as, far as, and as, far as I'm concerned. Patrice could never go up a weight class, a small 45 pound that should be fighting 135. That was his reality. Go up and beat the guy that knocked out his brother. That iconic scene of him looking at uh, Michael Chandler and saying, I'm coming for you. I'm going to knock you out when Michael Chandler says, I'm going to kill you. I mean, th his reality says that that's not going to happen. And it took you two years to happen, but we did it, and he did it in one minute. This is about creating our own reality, and that's what I'm in the business of. Is this a bit surreal for you, to come from, from, from that, so living your car and now, now having so much gold in your hands? Yes, I think, about, I think about how it all happened a lot. I mean, it's, you know, living out of your own car, depressed because I was in a relationship, in which there was a child involved, and then I could never see the baby again because we broke up. Um, that's what sent me into depression. And I ran into a guy named Rodrigo Minutaro Noguera. And his brother was fighting Tito Ortiz. And he's like, we need a wrestling coach. I want to get out of here. I was kind of depressed, fed up. 
And he said, you want to get out of here? You'll never think about your problems again. Come to Brazil. Came to Brazil. I got him ready in 2011 for UFC Rio 1. And at that time, that was the best team in the world as well. At that time, we had Anderson Silva on the team. Minotaur Nogueira, Rogério, uh, Feijão, Bigfoot Silva, Eric Silva, the Pitbull brothers, Fabio Maldonado, Honey Jason, uh, Junior Dos Santos. I mean, that was the num that was that's how it all started. Yeah. And even uh, just living, and at that point, I was living for, you know, I had to stay at the gym sometimes, five, six people in one room, one bathroom, you know, fight, you know, f beds on the floor, hammocks above them. You know, we had to make sacrifices, something that Henry always says, the sacrifice has to be bigger than the dream. And I had my own place in Brazil, I mean in the U.S. I had cars, I had my own spot, but I knew I needed to make the sacrifice. I needed to bend reality, but it wasn't going to stay like this. Eventually, my goal was always to build a world champion. But then once I got that world, first world title with Patricia, I got greedy, I wanted more. And I wanted, then we got two, and we wanted more, and we got three, and I wanted more, and we got four, and we want more. Now we're going for five and six, and it ain't stopping. So it, it doesn't seem surreal because this is what, this was always the goal. This has always been the goal, is to help people achieve their dreams. Their dreams becomes my dream. And how's the, the personal side of, of your life? <sighs> there is none. I could tell you that you could go, it's on my Instagram, but like even uh, on ESPN, I didn't get the coach of the year last year, and I went on the ESPN show with Errol Hamani, and I said, oh, you know what? You just motivated, her. You just motivated me, because this is what I'm going to do. On January 18th, we're going to take out TJ Dillashaw. Patricia Pitbull is going to do this. Patricia Pitbull is going to do this. By the end of the year, we're going to have four. Like, we already have four belts. So now we're going for even five and six. So I've, I've, uh, I've spoken this. I've spoken that this was going to happen. That's why it's, it's not surreal, because I've, I've believed it. Like I said, I believe it's happened. I act like it's happened. And then I'll go and gather the evidence to do it. And then we, how do we gather training, conversation, conversations with Henry, conversations with the team? How are we going to do it? What's your goal? Speak about it. How can we get to this goal? Oh, you lost the fight. What would you do different in this fight and the next fight that you didn't do in this fight? So things like that. A lot of it comes down to mental. Do you think Patricio can, can get a, a third title? Everybody talks about him going down to 135 one day. I know he can get a third title. For me, Patricio is pound for pound the best. The fact that he's not in, 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 in the UFC I have UFC fighters here. I see what goes on. I can see. And Henry Cejudo's game has evolved because of Patricio Pitbull. Patricio Pitbull game has evolved when we started bringing him to the Olympic Training Center and putting him against the wolves of wrestling. You know, Patricio has never even wrestled against somebody lower than an All-American. I think his first wrestling partner would, besides myself was Cejudo, Olympic champion. And then we took him to the OTC and he was with All-Americans and also Olympians. So he's never had, uh, I don't think he's ever wrestled somebody less than an All-American or national champion. So I've always made sure to put them in the, in the right spot. So he's the, he's the one that could do it. He's the one that, uh, he's pound for pound the best. I've seen him. He's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He's knocking out everybody out on the feet. He takes down wrestlers. He takes out Michael Chandler. He takes out Archuleta on a 20-fight winning streak. He's pound for pound. So can he go down and beat, win 135? Yes, definitely. We got the right nutritionist and Chico Freitas. We have, uh, we, we've done this before. We've won belts before. This is nothing new. So yeah, he could go down and I can guarantee he would win that belt. Do you think he's the most underrated fighter right now? Or maybe ever? Ever. Easily, easily. I see this dude do amazing things in the room. Uh, the, the, the way that he continues to evolve, I mean, I'm, I'm here. Henry's here. Kelvin's here. Boashinas came here. 
Uh, he, he hired a boxing coach that's a two-time world champion in Everton, a two-time Olympian. There's no academy in the world that has that. Olympic champions, two-time boxing world champions. Olymp There's three Olympian, three Olympic, uh, 2008 in China, 2012. And then, so those two Olympics, we have guys that are competing in both of them that are here right now, Everton. Uh, Henry Cejudo, Olympic champ, a world champ in boxing, which is, which is, is hard in amateur boxing to get a world title. So, especially coming from this side, you have Cuba, which is also hard, which is the, probably one of the best uh, boxing programs in the world. And you know, so yeah, I mean, we got he's he's created a a hub for all of the world really to to look at the the model. Here's the model. So here's why you have four belts in one gym. Is you, you hire the best coaches in the world, and that's it. We're going to see him back in March against Pedro, Pedro Carvalho. Uh, do you think that's the, the toughest challenge right now in the, in the featherweight bracket, or do you see someone that would be a, a tougher fight for him? Well, what happened with the featherweight bracket, I think, is I think they're all tough. I think they're all very good. It's one of the toughest tournaments. Man, you can look at everybody can be a world champion in that weight. So, Pedro Garvalo, we really picked him because of SBG. We want SBG. We want to be considered the number one gym in the world, and we got a rival with them. Uh, Leandro's been calling out. Uh, they're 35 pounder and James Gallagher, Leandro Ego. We've had Patri him call out Patricio and going back and forth in Patriki. And obviously, you know, Conor McGregor is from SBG, so we're here. I'm here to tell him that there's a new champ champ in town. It's Patrice Pitbull. That, that would be an ideal fight for me if it was ever to, to happen with cross promotion. We'd be a Patrice Pitbull. Patricia Pitbull has always said, I'll go up from one, I'll fight anybody from 35 to 170. And I believe him. And the way he took out, won the lightweight title, you should too. So if there was ever a, a super fight to happen, you know, a Pitbull versus Conor McGregor, put your money, bet the house on Pitbull. There's a new champ champ in town. How do you think that one goes down? Pure MMA. Probably by either, probably by submission. I see a lot of it happening like, not like the Khabib's game plan against him, but there will be takedowns involved because Patrice is a complete fighter and he's nasty on top and he can finish you when he has to in jujitsu. So it'd probably be that. Is he going to, to defend the life title before the, the Federal Tournament is over or only after that? Personally, I think he's got should get the 66 kilo over it uh, tournament over because that's for that million dollars. You know, you don't want to. It's hard to chase two rabbits at the same time. So at that mo at that moment, I think the focus should be the finals. Uh, the focus should be Pedro Carvalho. You know, we picked him for that reason, uh, and we also the strategic was really. Uh, put the young guys on one side, have them beat up each other, and put uh, the older guys on our side with Vichel and Emmanuel Sanchez, have those two beat up each other. And then, you know, our path is to go through um, either Emmanuel or Vichel, who's he's beat twice already, or he, yeah, he's beat Vichel twice, and then on to the final, which is probably going to be, well, it's just a couple people, you know, AJ. Uh, there's Borix, there's Caldwell. Um, who knows who's going to come out of that side? There was some, some criticism when the, the, all the drawing happened that you went for, for, for Pedro Carvalho instead of picking, picking someone, let's say, tougher, as fans say, as other fighters said, that would be uh, a champion defending his side against the best, and that, that Pedro Carvalho wasn't the best. Why do, What's our response to that? That's my job as the coach. We're here to win the war, not the battle. So strategic-wise, that's what we came up with. 
And the other thing, really, it was Patricio's, in the end, it's the fighter's decision. He said he didn't want to fight Caldwell because Caldwell was coming off a loss to Horiguchi. And he didn't want somebody coming off a loss. Yeah. So, or two losses to Corey yeah. So that's why. Um, on top of, uh, you know, coach's advice, hey, let's do this. We already knew he wanted to fight in March. Mm -hmm. but, but if it was the wrong opponent in March, we'd move it around. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think the SBG is what really intrigued him. Not only not wanting to fight Caldwell, which Caldwell is great. I have to tell you the truth. I, th I love the fact that Caldwell's on the other side because I think we're one of the only people that can beat Caldwell. And they have a big, huge history. Those two are at each other's throats. Uh, I think it's funny, but those two are always at each other's throats. And so I'd love for it to be Caldwell and Spike. Could be AJ too. Could be Boris. Could be Derek. I mean, there's a, there's a few. Anything can happen, but... The AJ and Caldwell, those two have beef with Patricia more than anybody. So either one of those I would like, I'd like to really see because uh, they could sell the fight and make that million dollars, make him really earn it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of your other champ, champ, Harry Cejudo, how's his, his recovery going? When do, can we expect to, to see him back? So Henry's recovery is, uh, I, I believe it's going well. I believe it's going better than expected. I believe he's... He's evolved as a fighter, more so not physically, but mentally. I believe he's more focused now. I, I don't really tell him this, but I, I see it. I could see him analyzing fights more. I could see him. Henry really didn't wa watch too much UFC uh, and MMA fights. Uh, and now he watches it, and I see him picking up things, and I see him wanting to review things, and I see him even telling me, hey, let me teach this practice. I see him, want, I, I see his hunger, and I kind of didn't see, I see more hunger. He's always been hungry, he's always been motivated, but not outside of practice. And as the champ champ now, I think he, he accepts that responsibility that he's got two bullseyes on his backs now, and, he, and if he can't evolve physically because of the injury, he's evolving strategically, tactically, and mentally. Which way would you uh, want him to go uh, for his next fight? To defend the flyweight title or the bantamweight title? I'm kind of torn because I like that Dominic Cruz fight. I know they've been at each other, calling each other's out. Um, I, as a coach, I know he doesn't like me to say this. As a coach, I'd like that fight against Benavidez. And he doesn't want to cut that weight, but... I know uh, I like the fight against Benavidez because on paper we lost that fight. I thought we won. A lot of people thought we won, but the judges didn't. So I'd like that fight back. So that's why I'd like that fight. And um, that's, a, that's an interesting fight in the flyweight division. The, to me, the flyweight division is a super flyweight division. This is why the flyweight can go up to 35 and win a belt. Because of how tough the flyweights are. The flyweights can go up and win the belt at 35. Ain't no more getting rid of the flyweights. They don't die, they multiply. And we're super flyweights. So everybody, if you ever wrestled in high school at 103, all the way to 135, you're a flyweight now. Sometimes even 145, a flyweight now. So um, it's a super flyweight. So I think that's actually the, one of the toughest fights out there for him because he lost to him. Uh, on the judges thing, so I'd like that fight back. Um, and I like Dominic Cruz. Dominic Cruz, another Arizona boy. He's a legend in the sport. He's a commentator. Uh, they've been talking crap on each other, so I'd love that fight too. You mentioned that uh, Henry Cejudo doesn't want to make the, the, the cut against 125. Do you think that if they do the, the Benavidez one, would be his last one at, one, at, at flyweight? The truth, I don't think so. I think he likes to be called double champ. I think he likes triple C. Although he'll always be triple C. Uh, unless he wins the third belt, we might have to sw switch it up. You know, anything can happen. Uh, there's always 145. You know, we got, I, I, I wouldn't be too bad to say I have two triple champs. You know, two, uh, three belts in UFC, three belts in Bellator. That would be something. I would be, 
That would be creating reality. Another belt you're going after is with Paulo Costa at middleweight. Unfortunately, he's injured and can't uh, fight for the for the title right now. Uh, there, there are talks about Adesanya defending side against Romero, who just lost to Paulo Costa. Was was the ideal scenario for him to come back straight against? The ideal scenario for me is because he got injured. As we still maintain that fight, you got the last style banner who's undefeated, one of the greatest years in history, the way he did it. Uh, Bohashina also has one of the greatest debuts in up till now in history. You know, he's 5-0, five, oh, five KOs. Uh, these two have to fight. They have to. And, and we maintain that fight. So the ideal situation, if you're asking the captain, the ultimate fighter on ESPN one, the first one ever. Bohashinya, the eraser, Paulo Costa versus the last style bender. The eraser versus the last style bender. Someone's O's gotta go. That's the ultimate fighter to make. Dana White has said they wanna make the ultimate fighter. And I say, let's do the two biggest names in the, in the division, if not the UFC, uh, Boy, uh, the eraser, Probably the best looking guy in the UFC, looks like Ricky Martin, hits like Mike Tyson, and then you got the last style bender. Who, who doesn't want to see that fight? So you ask the ideal situation, that's my ideal situation. And how do, do you envision Paulo Costa getting it done against Adesanya? No one was able to do that in MMA, he has lost in the past in kickboxing, Mark, I think. Uh, how do you think he gets it done? The same way Paulo always gets it done. Paulo is one of the strongest guys mentally I've ever met. Um, there's, he's very confident and very confident in his striking and there's no reason for him not to be. He just took out Yoel Romero, defended his shots, even took him down, close to taking him down. Um, defended a deep double leg, which to me was the, the game changer in the fight. He gets taken down in that first round, maybe he loses that first round. But he defended a deep double. And uh, I think that won him the first round because he got that knockdown in the first round as well. So I think uh, he, he goes out there and, and does exactly what Paulo does, march you down and puts his hands on you. Just a final one. Uh, you, shot, uh, you shared a tweet this week. I'm going to read what the, the, the quote said. I think you're going to remember that. Yeah, yeah. It was something like, uh, if a high-level wrestler puts in six months of jiu-jitsu, he won't get tapped. Can you elaborate on that? It wasn't your tweet. You were what, sharing I, that, but you agreed with it. With it with actually, I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't agree with it. A lot of people got mad. I had a. I didn't care. A lot of people started saying, "What about Ben versus Damon Maya? What about this? What about that?" The point of that tweet, with me retweeting it, was actually sticking up. Was to criticize wrestling was to criticize them because I believe the wrestling model should be better. There's eight out of, you know, there's at some point there was seven to eight titles came from wrestlers. Now I believe there's six, six titles. Six of the champions come with a background of wrestling. Wrestling does nothing with it. The moment Damian Maya submits Ben Askren, people start going to BJJ classes. Everybody in BJJ talks about it, which is good. But a wrestler goes out there and wins a UFC title, nobody talks about the wrestler. So the, when, you, when they said that it was Gordon Ryan versus um, Bo Nickel, two of the greatest right now at the time. You know, Bo Nickel just won the U23 world title, under 23 years old world title, three-time NCAA champ, three-time ADC champ. And they were saying, well, he, he really only had a couple of weeks to train for him. But the rules were geared towards jujitsu. If there's a, so I, it's very hard for a wrestler to uh, to really stop somebody if the rules are because when, once you take you down, that's our points. But now we're in your world. So the fact that they were saying, "Well, look at that. He only trained a couple of weeks and he lasted 12 minutes with him. Give him six months and he'll be able to defend it." Which like not against the best, but the point was was like we've known that Mark Kerr. Did it in ADCC. All these wrestlers didn't all of a sudden come into the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So what's different now? That was the point of the tweet. 
is that, yeah, we've known that before. 20 years ago it was done. Why didn't all the wrestlers come over then? Now they're going to come? I doubt it. They, that's what I was criticizing. I wasn't criticizing that, the, the way people thought. I was like, yeah, we've known that if a wrestler trains jiu-jitsu, he could be very good at it. But they don't come over. So that's what I was kind of uh, criticizing the tweet mm -hmm. yeah. as more than criticizing the, uh, but I get it on both. It doesn't matter to me. As long as people are commenting, commentating, I'm fine. Ramon Lemos commented. A few people commented. Yeah. Who do you think is the, the next big name in wrestling to, to make waves in the name? To tell you the truth, probably Bo Nickel, the guy that just went against Gordon Ryan. Two weeks, two to three weeks to train for the greatest ADC, one of the greatest of all time in Gordon Ryan. You know, he's got three ADC titles. He trained two weeks for it, three weeks of submissions. And he did that. That's what I, I enjoyed, these guys being, being able to take on challenges stepping out of their comfort zone and enter another one. You know, I t I, you know, Henry, Henry boxed in the copper gloves and golden gloves. You know, I tell my fighters, you have to compete. Competing, I say that wrestlers are black belts in competing. Every weekend we got to cut weight. Every weekend we got an All-American in front of us. Possibly two or three in one day. Having not to prepare, having no time, 10 minutes to prepare for each different one and not knowing who you're going to prepare for. So. Uh, that's how is, 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 is the person that gets, that competes the most. He's competed obviously in wrestling. So now maybe he's, he's competed in jujitsu already. His first jujitsu match. He's a white belt going against a, an ADC champ black belt under John Donaher in grappling with grappling, some grappling rules, submission. I mean, if you're doing that, you're willing to take on anything. So somebody like that. So I would say Bo Nickel right now. He's the biggest name that I think of that's already talking about coming into MMA. He's in a big jiu-jitsu match already. So that would be the, most, uh, the, the, the next big name. And then who knows what happens after 2020? You know, the, uh, the, the 2008 Olympic team, those three guys that were on the team, look how far they went. DC got two belts. Henry got two belts. Ben Askren had a Bellator belt. Ben Askren had a 1FC belt. You know, Ben Askren is part of the reason why they created the BMF belt. So, you know, that one Olympic team, look, well, look how much success they had. Imagine what the 2020 team could do, or the 2016 to do, if these guys ever get into MMA. But right now, I think it's uh, Bo Nickel, because he has confirmed that he's making that transition. So I think it'll be real exciting to watch how far he goes.